Welcome to the Tech Up Checkup podcast with the Girl Tech Innovators, Julia Hilburn and Lori Boyer. We hope that you all had a very restful break and that everyone stayed healthy and you took some time to unplug and recharge. So important, right? That self-care, that should be our, our motto going into 2021 yes, as educators. Yes, new year. We're all starting fresh. Um, so speaking of starting fresh, we wanted to start off this um, podcast today kind of spotlighting the Tech Up Check Up Innovator of the Month, Zule Garcia from Lakewood Park Elementary. Woo! Woo! Way to Good go, job, Zule. Um, this school year has been, she has been instrumental in supporting both traditional and brick and mortar teachers at her school site. Mm-hmm. She is also a top user in the instructional technology team that is available to everyone district wide. She's always jumping in. She's the first one to help answer fellow teachers' questions, or if they, you know, are struggling, she'll say, hey, this is what we're doing over at my school. Absolutely. And she's just yeah, she's a top innovator, and we are super happy to have her as a technology team player. Zule, Zule you've, you've been, been tech checked. All right, we are now going to. Um, I wanted to jump in and ask Lori if. There's something going on with Nearpod. Mm -hmm. So over break, I made sure that I was checking the team and if there was anybody posting that they were struggling. And a couple of the teachers were posting that their Nearpod account seemed to have some limitations. Correct. So can you explain a little bit about that and how we can kind of help support them before they have to reach out to the help desk? Sure, absolutely. We definitely want to be able to cut off any frustrations before they occur. So one of the things that we've noticed is that we have heard from some teachers saying, hey, I'm trying to save a lesson that someone shared with me, but it's saying I don't have any more storage or I'm low on storage in my Nearpod account. Mm -hmm. Um, The other thing that we're noticing is, you know, sometimes teachers will say, hey, I'm trying to create things and certain things aren't available to me within my Nearpod account. What we've noticed is that the teachers typically are not signed into their district account. So the district has purchased Nearpod and it should be a district user for all employees, all educators here in St. Lucie County. So what you want to do as an educator is go into your Nearpod account, go to the profile picture at the top right of your screen, And when you click on that and it says um, manage user, then you'll want to make sure that it says district user. Uh. If it says silver, then that means that you've probably created an account on your own or something that we've noticed is on the sign in page. It's imperative that you're signing in with the red Office 365 button. If you do that, then what happens automatically in the background (laughs) is that it will um, sign you in with single sign-on utilizing your Microsoft Office 365 district account. However, if you sign in with your email address and your password, then it's going to give you a silver user account, which does have account size limitations and such. So first step, you want to check and make sure you have a district user account in Nearpod, and that should help clear up any frustrations that you might have. Wonderful. So it sounds like it's a pretty easy fix. We just need to make sure that everyone is using their district given account um, information through 065. Absolutely. And you know, kind of to that just brought up a thought here too. You want to make sure too that in the team that you're going to the Nearpod channel, right? Because there's videos in there, there's information about logging on just to ensure that you're doing it the right way or if you have any questions, you can share it out in there too. Definitely, that's how I always see people asking these questions back and forth. So I just wanted to clarify district-wide for everyone. Perfect, thank you. Yeah, of course. So, you know, speaking of that, there's um, new year, new updates, right? So one of the things uh, has been some updates to Canvas and kind of the aesthetics and how it looks once you're in there as an educator and you're getting your course created for the new year. So Julia, could you share a little bit about that? Definitely. I think there's two um, main things that I would like to mention about that. One is really simple. So if you have been using Canvas and you're not new to our district and we're just you know starting off the new year, um, student view has changed. And what I mean by that is every teacher has the option to log in as a fake test student in each course. It's called student view. And they can actually go through the progression of the course from start to finish, click around. They can take quizzes and their own assignments. They can mm-hmm. reset their student. Uh, And it's a great way to just kind of troubleshoot, if you will, 
before, you know, publishing everything. And then your students are like, I can't see that. Absolutely. You know, sometimes you, 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 you think you're there, you have stuff in there, but you really just want to see what it would look like on the kids. Sure. You know, and, and to be honest, a lot of the calls that we've received in the past have been, my kids say that they can't see this. I'm like, Correct. okay, so let's go in as a student and see what they see. So it, it helps out a little bit. The only difference is it used to be, um, it used to actually say student view on your course homepage mm -hmm. on the educator side and now it is like condensed into a small little binocular type um, icon that mm -hmm. is located in the top right corner of your course so it's still there on the home page it's actually now embedded on every page even better even better <laughs> so you don't have to get out of where you are in your course to then go into student view right where you are you could say you know what I want to see what my kids see when when I hit publish and then they can go to student view and look at it that way Awesome. Another thing that um, is probably good to note at this time of year, because we just started a brand new semester, mm -hmm. whether you're brand new to our district and you're not sure how we use Skyward and we schedule our courses, or you just forgot, right? So right. the beginning of this year was crazy. <laughs> I feel like it was a lifetime ago. Yep. So if you are a teacher that teaches multiple sections of the same course, so mm -hmm. perhaps you teach Algebra 1 and you teach it virtually and you teach it brick and mortar, inside of canvas you're going to have two courses right that could get cumbersome it's a lot right, right? i don't want to have to do the same things over and over mm -hmm. so if i'm doing it for my virtual kids do i want to have to remake all of that stuff for my brick and mortar kids right if they're doing the same thing you can actually take both of those courses and combine them into one it's called cross listing um, inside of the instructional notebook as well as inside of the um, instructional team there mm -hmm. are directions on how to do that there's also a quick little video and you just do it in the background and then all of those sections or periods of kids whether they're virtual or brick and mortar will live in the same course so you don't have to do extra work perfect you're kind of bringing the best of both worlds together into one place and you know kind of uh, cuts down your your input time definitely definitely awesome. and I know we have had some um, new employees that just jumped on board with us which we're excited about so we want them to know for one that that's out there for them to do excellent and once again if you need some you know additional details and how to do that you could look up cross listing within the instructional notebook um, and it should be able to search for it and give you those details step by step Definitely, definitely. So with the new semester starting, it's a great time to just clean up and yes. organize. It's a great way to just say we're starting fresh, especially everyone needs to start fresh right now with 2021. Um, do you have any tips that we could share with teachers on just how to kind of organize teams or, or better help them and their students kind of stay organized? Absolutely. So that is true. New year, new look, right? So we want to make sure that we have everything organized and as effective as possible. So with Within Microsoft Teams, one of the newer enhancements that have rolled out are is the pinning feature. So the pinning feature can be utilized in various components throughout Teams. So for example, if you have a team for your class and you have files and underneath those files section, you save various documents. But you might want to draw attention to some specific files because maybe regardless of when a student starts the class, it's great as a reference point, um, maybe it's something that's pertinent for the next two weeks or month when you're on a specific unit. If you go into your file section and you go down to the document and you click in the little circle on the left-hand side of the name, you will then see at the top of your screen, there will be a pin to top option. When you click that pin to top option, what it does is it puts it right there at the top and then all of the rest of your documents under files lay underneath it. So it's kind of spotlighting, you know, saying, hey, this is an important document or this is an, a document you might reference a lot. So that's one component of pinning. What's nice to know is that at any point, hey, that two weeks is up. I don't need to draw attention to it anymore. Simply you go to it and you unpin it. Yeah. And that sounds like a great feature, especially for like our little kiddos. Yeah. And they're, you know, they're, they may be full virtual and they know they have homework somewhere, but they're not sure where to find this file or they're collaborating together and their right. parents are helping them. Yep. This is a great way to just say, hey, this week or, or tonight, this is what we're working on. Because it sounds like you could just unpin it when you're ready. Majorly flexible. Wonderful. So another part to that is oftentimes teachers, they do a great job making this announcement 
relevance within their team, right? So in any one of the channels, there might be something that you want to draw attention to. So you click that little text um, icon and you make it into an announcement. So it projects nice and big within that channel um, conversation. That's my favorite feature. <laughs> Mine too. <laughs> it just takes it to the next level, right? It's, Instead oh, no, of it's just so nice. <laughs> <laughs> you could add images, pictures. It's great. So um, sometimes though, there's an announcement that you want to make sure is being focused on throughout that week, or you really just want to you know, make sure that it stays as pertinent on that conversation thread. Once again, on that announcement, once you've posted it at the far right, if you click on the three dots, it will give you the option to pin your announcement. So you'll see literally, I think it's green with white, a post-it pin is what it looks like. It'll go in the top right corner of that announcement and boom, it'll be there for you to reference and you know it'll stand out on your, ki on your kids' um, channels within the team. That's a great idea too, because you know if you're changing something or you want them to do something different, you yeah. can just you know, bring attention right to that and it doesn't get lost with all the other conversations that are happening in that channel. Absolutely. And then the latest and greatest, and I find this one good for my own personal use, is if you're out there and you utilize your mobile device, right? Um, something that I found helpful is I, on the mobile device, I might have a lot of teams. So I have to scroll through and find the teams that I frequently use and go to the channel that I regularly post in or want to receive information from, right? However, if I go into a team mm -hmm. and there's a specific channel that I really want to you know, throw to the forefront so I know what's going on in that channel at any given time, I can pin that channel. So same sort of feature, you go to the three dots, you'll have the pinning option. And then what's really nice is it displays right at the very top of my teams in my mobile device. So first and foremost, Quick I access. see those pin channels, yep. And so I can really keep my eye on what's going on in those. Um, personally, you know, if I have a class that I know needs a little additional support, that'd be a great way for me to see, oh, it's right here, let me pop in there. Sure. Let me make sure, you know, that their questions are getting answered, things of that nature. Or maybe it's part of a collaborative team that you're a part of, you know, professionally. So you wanna be able to contribute your ideas and be on top of what's going on. What's really nice is at any given point, I just slide to the left and I have the unpin option. So ah. as simple as it is to pin it, it's just as easy to unpin it and it won't be at your fingertips And that's anymore. something to really highlight because a lot of us are so afraid to swipe left yes. because it's always like archive, delete, oops, what did I do, it's gone. So right. if you're trying to unpin, it is swipe to the left yep. and it's not going to delete your channel or your team, it's just going to unpin it for you back into the list of all your others. Absolutely. Good so to know. right there and right at your fingertips. And you know, some of these tips and tricks we'll try and highlight in the very applications throughout our podcast because this is what makes functioning easier for you as an educator as you're infusing instructional technology. Yes, 100%. So we have shared a lot in this short amount of time, <laughs> and that is our goal of our podcast, The Tech Up Checkup, is just to kind of get all this information out there to you on your drive home, on your lunch break, and your transitions, just to be able to quickly stay up to date on all of the new features and what's happening throughout the district. So we're really excited that this is launched. It yes. launches on the 15th of every month. You can now officially listen to us on wherever you get your Any podcast from. So after Apple, um, Spotify, Spotify, Amazon, Buzzsprout, anywhere Podcast you addicts. want. <laughs> yes, so we're excited about that. And just to add, um, if you like what you hear today, please tell a friend because um, we are excited to announce that we've had people from Europe actually listen to our podcast. We are international. So we're going, <laughs> going global. Um, but really, you know, this is just stuff that we can share out with educators. And if it's helpful for our crew here at St. Lucie Public Schools, then we're happy to collaborate and share on a broader basis. Definitely. So definitely follow Girl Tech Innovators and get our Tech Up checkup to listen to. All right, guys, you have a wonderful month and we'll see you on the 15th next time. Bye. <laughs>